It sounds really romantic. Yeah, it was really and romantic. sensual. It- <laughs> Hakone. <laughs> Wait, was it Hakone? Oh, it's a uh, Kyoto. Kyoto. <laughs> Travel is a wonderful way to get to know other parts of the world, to get to learn more about yourself, and also for today's episode, to learn about your significant other. Whether it's a road trip, a weekend getaway, or an international adventure, you're bound to learn more about your special person. Yeah, travel definitely activates a lot in a person. You will encounter situations around your planning habits, budget habits, um, expectations, uh, different you know values and things that you find interesting. How do you react under pressure when things don't go as planned? Um, are they open to trying new foods? How do you navigate when there's like a different language or you get mm-hmm. lost? There's so much that can... Um, be presented in in one single trip. And in terms of the relationship, it also gives you an opportunity to kind of like be with each other outside of your everyday routine, right? It could be amazing. You get to spend time together outside of the norm, relax a bit, uh, but it can also pose a lot of challenges, which hopefully, if handled correctly, will mean that you get to know each other better. Yes, and our good friend here, Janet, just came back from Japan with her boyfriend, Eugene, and we want to know all the details, like what went well, what could have been better and for Helen and myself how do our own experiences relate okay so let's start with miss <clears throat> janet so mm-hmm. she just came back from an international trip to japan yes with her boyfriend eugene e i don't know why i had to end eugene <laughs> um, can you share with our listeners what cities you went to and also how was it so this is our first international trip together. Mm-hmm. Um, we decided on Japan and we started looking into flights. So we just, you know, Tokyo is one of the main hotspots. So we started by just booking Tokyo and then kind of in between figured out that we wanted to also check out um, Hakone, Osaka and Kyoto. Mm. So we actually checked out four different cities, but because we planned our uh, flights in and out of Tokyo, it was kind of like five different location changes. Mm. Mm. So it was very busy, but I will say overall, it was a very fun trip. Um, We got a really good balance of seeing like city setting and like metropolitan vibes and like Tokyo and Osaka. But we also had a lot of great experiences in like nature and relaxing in like the onsens and stuff. Were you naked in the onsens? Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Were you? Did you? For, I mean, we had in our, in the private places that we, yeah. So yeah. 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 We, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I've done that before too. Yeah. It's like, it's pretty cool. It's liberating. Well, I didn't, yeah. I actually, to be honest, I didn't do the public one. So we did, we booked just like one night, um, at like a, a place and then had our own in the, in Oh, the so you two. So we just did. Yeah. That's in nice. the same oh, yeah. so not gender. Uh, not, not the gender. Okay. Set, yeah. Because okay. we wanted to spend time together. If That's we had to be separate, then. You very know. intimate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It was, a, it was a very dynamic trip in that way. Um, but I think like I shared, because of all the traveling back and forth, it also tested us a mm-hmm. lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, personal endurance. Uh, we are in our thirties and forties and. And the last time we both went abroad to like Asia was, I don't know, like before COVID, right? So um, I think my physical endurance of being able to deal with time change and then also like move from city to city and carry all the bags and like figure out transport was definitely different than the last time I traveled. Mm -hmm. So there was, you know, we got into, which I'll share, we got into some things that, you know, that were challenging. Yeah. (laughs) Well, speaking of hardships on trips. I know. I feel like oh, rhyming over here. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it rhymed until now. Um, hardships, trips. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel like we always say that like going on an international trip or a trip with a significant other is like the ultimate test, right? Mm-hmm. And because you're bound to run into disagreements, um, tensions run high, especially in a busy like city like Tokyo. Were there any disagreements with you and Eugene? And you know, can you kind of walk us through some of them if you're okay with sharing? One of the first kind of thing, the disagreements that we had was on how we navigate. Mm. Um, I think I've I've read that men and women kind of do directions differently. And uh, for myself, I tend to navigate a lot using Google Maps. Like I look at the little arrow thing and I use that as like the GPS thing. I'm on and the same I, page as you. Right. Yes. So I'd be like, this is the hotel. I will put that in the in the phone and then I'll just like look at the arrow to uh-huh. figure out. Is am I going the right way for the street? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Eugene is much more like, let me get the lay of the land of the streets. I'm not going to trust the GPS because it's not always accurate. 
and mm. uh, and then let me get a sense of the streets and then go this way. So in the beginning, there was a bit of like just miscommunication when we are both trying to find the directions. He's doing it his way. I'm doing it my way. And then it's a little bit of like learning to trust the other person, but then also be forgiving if they're a little wrong, like mm. if they misguide mm-hmm. the other way or not. Um, so I guess there was a little bit of that in the beginning, but that wasn't too bad. I think you, that will happen with like anyone, right? Like yeah. if you go, if you go anywhere. On the second day of the trip, we got into a pretty extensive I'm not going to call it argument. I'm going to call it serious discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it all built up. in. So it's going to be a little bit of a long-winded story, but let me try to abbreviate this. And there's a bunch of stuff to do there. There's all these little stalls. Like, you can get, like, sashimi. You can get um, – mm-hmm. they have, like, beef skewers. And you can do, like, desserts and matchas and ice creams. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, yep. like, super lively. You're – uh, you know, like kind of seeing all these exciting things and smelling all these exciting scents, but it's also super crowded and mm. you're like like shoulder to shoulder with people. It's a little bit intense, right? Yeah. Um, but we're like excited. We're there. It's like our first big thing that we're doing and we go to a couple stalls. We have some seafoods and then I see a matcha place and I'm like, oh, I want to go in and take a look at some of the matcha stuff. And he's like, okay, uh, while you do that, I'm going to go look for the beef skewers. Mm. So I was like, okay, that's fine. We'll like separate. We have our phones. So we separate, and then as soon as I finish my matcha thing, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go look for him for the for the. I'm gonna, gonna go look, look for the beef. I'm yes. gonna go look for him at the beef place, right? Yes. And g- granted, we did not like we didn't walk by it before, so I didn't know where it was. Mm. He, I don't think he knew where it was. I just assumed he was gonna go look for it. So I look outside, and I'm like, kind of trying to navigate my way. I eventually find it. And then I text him. I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't see you. Where are mm. you? Mm. And he's like, oh, I couldn't find it. I'm back at the matcha place. And this, mind you, is like. I'm still a little bit jet lagged, so I got like a little bit annoyed. Just you know, there's like people everywhere, yeah, and, like, yeah. there's like you know all, all the stuff going on. So I was like, okay, so I like type out the directions, like from the matcha shop, you head out, make a right, and then it's like a little bit on your right side, blah blah blah. I don't remember exactly, and then I see the like little bubble text coming out, and like kind of like he's thinking, and then he stops, and then he's like thinking, and he stops, and then I was like, just press like, send. Yeah, yeah, I was just like, what's going on? And then, um, and then I eventually, I think I just like call him and I'm like, Hey, I'm at the beef skewer place. And he's like, Oh, I can't like find it. I was like, I gave you the directions. And he's like, Oh, but you're like, it's not like specific. Like, did you mean coming right for this way or whatever it was? (laughs) Um, but basically I was getting a little peeved and I was like showing a bit of attitude, but he was keeping his calm Mm. and I couldn't tell if he was like, I almost was a little bit like, you're not upset by this. Like it's a little bit annoying, you know, we're like Mm. trying to find the, the, the whatever, um, and so, but I can tell like after a little bit of time that he is feeling the pressure and the intensity. And so the next place that we go to is, was one of my more like the places I was like really excited about, which is like team planet labs or whatever. And throughout the whole experience, it's like, we're both like trying to be cordial. I guess I could tell something was bothering him. I could tell things were bothering me, but I didn't quite know how to like articulate it. Mm. And, um, we went through the whole day and it was like, trying to be casual and like you know going through all this stuff and then at night like I don't remember how the conversation starts but essentially I was like hey I know you're upset like what is going on Mm. um and he kind of was like well you were giving me a lot of attitude today from like the the uh at the like the fish market I was like oh I didn't know you picked up on that because you didn't react right away I Mm. thought like you Mm. didn't you seem like you were fine with everything he's like well you got to choose your battles so I was not going to choose to like talk about that Mm -hmm. um and then I was like okay well that pissed you off (laughs) that I'm a little bit more like addressing things on the spot and I think and I and I told him I'm sorry um you know I I reacted I was basically, I got annoyed. Yeah. Right? Like I got annoyed that we were in this crowded place that you couldn't find the directions. Um, and it's it's fair that I should like cut you some slack. Like we're pretty sleep deprived. And he had actually done a lot of the trip planning up until it. And so mm. I think he was just more like, kind of like overall frazzled maybe. Mm. Um, and so then that led into the deeper conversation of, well, you should have cut me some more slack because like, yeah, I've done... I did a lot of the planning for this and this is like one small thing. Mm. And then I said, you know, I'm sorry. I know it's been really busy with work. I just haven't had the capacity. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, I felt like we we booked like the bigger places and, um, you know, we sat together and we created like I created the document for us and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, that's not like but still all the details Mm. like I've had to like look into. Um, and then that led into a deeper conversation around just what each person is doing in the house. Like, Hey, I feel like I am like, it'd be great if you could help out around the house more. Mm. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? I do like a lot of the, the dishes in the, or I, I do help out a lot. And he's like, yeah, the dishes and the laundry. And that's like it. But I was like, what else is there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the things that happen. The often. cooler, the cooler, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, the cool. I mean, there's, 
I think what it comes down to is like we realize that my habits of being very like minimalistic, I don't, I'm used to not doing a lot of house chores because mm. I'm used to just living by myself and not having a lot of things to do. Mm -hmm. He also lives by himself, but he has a dog and he's older and he's like acquired things. He's not a minimalist. He, you know, moved from Chicago and he was an SF and now he's in LA and he brings all of his stuff with him. And he also is like someone who's a hobbyist. So if he gets really into something, he'll buy the special knives for that thing or he'll like yeah. buy the special pan. So he will just at the end of the day kind of like have have more dishes to do or laundry to do and so yeah. for me I'm like I'm doing all of that isn't that a lot yeah, it's like yeah. but what about the you know like the like the composting and taking out the trash and stuff I don't I think mm. it was just like I was a little um it snowballed it snowballed it like snowballed. A small, yeah, yeah. A small, I guess, yeah I guess basically it's thing. yeah it snowballed into this bigger conversation so basically what started as kind of like a, a like miscommunication of directions of not being able to find places mm -hmm. snowballed into planning of the trip conversation snowballed into you know how we work around the home uh conversation and so it was a large discussion but by the end of it I feel like we both walked away feeling like okay mm. um it was good that we learned a lot mm. and the rest of the trip was like kind of being able to like um, navigate on the spot problems and problem solve together I feel like we were pretty okay with that mm. but it's more I think just like the planning and the overall dynamic of our relationship um, we because we were still pretty new like at that point we hadn't had some of these conversations yet we had also just moved in together like a month yeah. before kind of like all this stuff happened so um, yeah that was <laughs> I appreciate you sharing all of these details. This is why we have this podcast. <laughs> I think a lot of times people just skim over like, oh, yeah, we had some challenges. And it's like, oh, OK, you guys OK? Like, yeah, we're good now. But yeah. like you went into detail about what it is that does happen on these trips, especially yeah. when you're going with a significant other for the first time international. There's so there's actually like learning from this. Like there's so much planning that needs to be done ahead of time because mm -hmm. you just never know. Like, it, is he going to like this? Is, does he really want that? Be did he get the beef skewer? He did. <laughs> he did get the beef skirt and actually he said that was probably the best thing he had on the trip okay, okay. so it was, <laughs> it was worth it it was the worth argument it, yeah. but at the same time like all of this stuff coming out it's like oh it sucks that i had to come out on the trip but like at least it did come out at some point so you can yeah, work yeah. through it and figure out if you want to keep you know working through these things together yeah. yeah yeah i also feel like with direction i i would i would be annoyed too i think everyone gets annoyed with just yeah like direction. keeping directions yeah, i think yeah, it's yeah. really hard because people do communicate it really differently because mm -hmm. i would be like because i would be like oh just drop a pin mm. but i don't know if that works too because everyone has everyone does it differently and yeah, i yeah. i think as you were just speaking janet i could feel i could see why this are argue or this discussion happened because just for like timeline context like you guys moved in what in february we went to video right away and you guys went in april like that's not a lot of time to get situated in a situation like in like your context and you're moving on to the next thing mm -hmm. yeah so it's kind of like when would you have time to plan but i think the biggest thing i'm taking away from your story is that to be aligned on expectations yeah and yeah, even yeah. like be aligned on the expectations of your communication style yeah like yeah. saying i taught this way you taught this way but i prefer if we do it this way yeah, yeah. So, but you're not going to know that until exactly until when you it happens. Into yeah. a situation like this, right? And I feel like ahead of, ahead of time, he's probably like, okay, I'm going to plan minimally, and then we'll figure it out. And then it, a lot of this doesn't, you know, get unpacked until you're actually yeah. on yeah, the yeah. trip. And it's yeah, like, yeah. why? Why yeah. couldn't we figure this out beforehand? Right, but you right. just, yeah, I think you're always like going to give each other the benefit of the doubt and just be like, it's mm -hmm. going to be great. And yeah. then it's that's that's where your your expectations are also just way too high. Yeah, you know, yeah. for yeah. each other, especially if you don't know each other's travel style and how they direction wise. And yeah, like, yeah. they really want that beef skewer like <laughs> he didn't communicate that also if he planned it all like he should have said this is where the beef skewers are <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> how's your matcha uh the, i actually didn't end up getting it but i just i went around to like look at i was i was just like window shopping basically. that's nice yeah okay i eventually got the matcha later after that's at the end but. what do you feel like you learned about yourself as mm. a partner in the context of travel and also eugene yeah i well the big thing is that um, I I appreciate so much my friends who plan because I realize how much I take for granted in a lot of these details. I have planned trips on my own, but I, my travel style is much more lenient. Mm. And uh, I think I've just learned that he prefers it to be more structured, but he also likes to plan together. Yeah, the travel style is more that he likes structure and he likes kind of more um, pre-planned stuff. I'm kind of like okay with going with the flow compared to when you were in your 20s and mm. potentially traveling with a boyfriend then yeah, yeah. i don't know if you have like an international trip but how is how was that trip different from the trip that you took now in your 30s and then him being in his 40s mm. yeah that's a great question um i actually i have never traveled internationally with someone i was dating i think 
like boys out there listening like what you forgot <laughs> about me <laughs> no yeah international never like with the two of us I actually don't think I've traveled like it was just more like domestic trips mm-hmm. um I mean one of the bigger things is just endurance mm. like <laughs> physically you know when you're younger you're okay with like being able to go from location to location lifting all your bags um, you just have more like physical tolerance um and and also maybe just like you are able to recover from jet lag faster like mm-hmm. I I thought I did because like the last time I traveled was like five to seven years ago to Asia and I don't remember that being so much of an issue but it did hit me a lot harder than it hit him and so that kind of shifted his expectations of going out the first night and different things like that so mm-hmm. um interesting yeah I think in terms of travel our styles are a little different Eugene mm-hmm. is the kind of person that likes to research a lot about a place get excited about a specific knife place that he wants to go to that you know it's like cooking knives that, mm-hmm. that are well known in Japan or a specific like museum that he wants to go see and then from there planning like destination mm-hmm. stuff like that mm-hmm. I'm much more like let's get the core things booked and then we'll figure it out when we get there so obviously we both came into this trip maybe like I was like I think things are I know I didn't get to help with planning a lot but we got we know where we're mm-hmm. staying and we know like the places we're going I think yeah. we're okay and I think for him he kind of came in feeling like uh like this is this was barely planned and I tried to shoulder as much as I could of the planning mm-hmm. but only like maybe like 70 percent of it got done mm-hmm. so um learning our different expectations in that way was big um but and like i think something positive that i took away in terms of our similarities is that we have pretty similar like um pacing of like what we want to do within a day mm. and like physical endurance right because when you're yeah. traveling it's like there's a lot of like navigating public transportation there is like how many things do you want to see in a day do you want to go look at sites do you want to like walk around the streets and um i think in terms of like the number of things we do in a day when you get up and when you get out of the ho- uh, hotel and when you come back at night when you head to bed like we're pretty much on the same page in that way mm. yeah mm-hmm. that sounds that's um, good to yeah you know. so. <laughs> it sounds like you guys are compatible in terms of, like um lifestyle while traveling like what Mm. type of things and like that's really important too so I think it's good that you like got that takeaway from the trip yeah yeah I think the expectations with like budget um with uh like priority of what we want to see and do our energy levels like we're pretty in line with that it's just the communication (laughs) and the and the um planning Mm. communicating and having like different expectations I think is something we're still working on but outside of that second day tiff um it was actually a really really amazing trip um and actually uh Kyoto was like a really special moment for our trip because I had shared with Eugene that like one of the places that um I had always wanted to go or like a thing I wanted to do was to uh go to an onsen and Mm -hmm. like have like that like special experience inside of like um uh like with the robes and everything he was the one that like when we were planning he's like oh I'll, I'll book the onsen for us I was like okay um I didn't really think very much of it and then when we got there he's like oh I booked this like release like the special like um suite where you have like this the private onsen in your like loft with you wow. because the all the other ones it's like public space right yeah, so yeah. it's like you would either and we were only going to be there for one night once again our planning was a little bit like um but if we were only gonna be there for one night then we would only be in like if we were in the public space then we wouldn't be able to hang out with each other yeah so yeah. he booked kind of like it would be like kind of like the honeymoon suite for us wow um, and it was just it was really really beautiful it was one of those like you know like you open up the um the doors and all you see is just like the mountain view wow and, like, that sounds the, nice like beautiful different colored trees and I think for us like that way is like three-fourths of the trip in for me it was like this is the perfect time that I need to just like mm. unwind decompress I had like my meditation there you know mm. <laughs> um yeah so that was it was like a a very I don't know like really special experience in that way and that was like a really thoughtful thing for him to do it sounds so. really romantic yeah, it was really and normal. sensual. <laughs> Hakone. Yeah. Oh, was that Hakone? Oh, it's a uh, Kyoto. 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 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, it's Mel. Are you like me and on this constant journey to find the answers to your anxiety? Well, let me share with you the secret that has helped me. It's doing my daily meditation and incorporating some kind of movement into my days. That's why I've been loving the open app. I usually start my mornings with a meditation on the app. This really sets my foundation for the day and my go-to meditation is morning pause with Aaron G. As for movement, I really want to get in tune with my body more and have been incorporating yoga into my weekly workouts. 
whether it's with my roommate or Janet, it's been something I surprisingly look forward to. Depending if I want a morning flow or something to end my night, Open has so many options for me to choose from. If you want to get on my daily routine, you can get 30 days free of Open by visiting withopen.com slash ABG. Again, 30 days free by visiting withopen.com slash ABG. The link will be in this episode's show notes. And don't forget to follow me and your friends on the app. My username is AsianBossGirl1. It's summer, the sun is shining, and I am ready to get outdoors. From beachfront jogs to waterfall hikes, we have such beautiful options here in LA. But I'm reminded that finding cute waterproof shoes is such a struggle. I usually have to decide between sneakers I like but sacrifice getting them wet and possibly damaged, or waterproof shoes that won't get ruined but are uh, eccentric looking. Thankfully, today's sponsor, Vessi, has solved this problem for me with their 100% waterproof shoes that look and feel like your everyday sneaker. They come in a variety of styles, trail-ready high tops, effortless slip-ons, and classic court shoes, all waterproof. They are just as comfortable and stylish as your favorite sneakers, but even more versatile. These shoes are lightweight, breathable, and vegan, which is a feature that I really value. If you don't want to have to choose between style and function, head to Vessi.com slash ABG and get yourself a pair today. Go to Vessi.com slash ABG and get shoes for your best summer yet. Our code gets you 15% off and shipping is free to select locations. I would love to hear from you ladies mm-hmm. how, um, you know, your different experiences of traveling with a partner is. Yeah. I mean, like Jana, I'm like in a new relation, new relationship. I've been in with him for a year now, but I will say we haven't gone on like major international trips yet. We are also going to Japan. So I'm learning a lot from this episode. Mm. We're going November, um, but we have taken a lot of road trips. We were long distance or so like going to the mm. Bay, going to LA. I think this, this is just so minimal, but yes, your mode of transportation is a car. I realize how much, how much preference I have driving by myself, like my own music, my own thoughts, whatever. But like when you have another person in the car with you, you're like, oh shit, like I have to make sure like I have to listen to what you want to listen to. Mm. And there's definitely moments where I'm like, we got in like fights because we're like, oh, like he's like, can I listen to this podcast? And I was like, this is boring. <laughs> I don't want to listen to that. And so I think sometimes like if I see, I feel myself like being a little bit like set in my ways and not being mm. flexible. Um, it depends on who's driving. Mm. He was driving. Girl. I know. I know. <laughs> I think that's the rule. It's like whoever's driving, they decide what is going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, I've got, I definitely have moments of being annoyed or like whatever because mm. like n- the preference thing or like even like when we want to leave, that's another thing. You're like, oh, I want to leave earlier, but I don't mind waiting. It's just like a, mm. the timing of stuff is always an issue. But communication is one thing you just had to like be like, hey. And also for me, the, the biggest takeaway I learned is just like to be – open-minded and flexible you mm. want to hear about this finance podcast sure i'll, <laughs> I'll go to sleep <laughs> yeah yeah during during your nap time yeah and now i'll be like can we play k-pop like just kind of like okay. these are little things i know that you may not even think of but you're like oh this does add a little bit but i'm pretty sure i'll have more stories and conversations after our international trip but yeah nothing- Ooh, we're gonna do a part two with mel's japan yeah, trip yeah. and then we also got a onsen in kyoto or something <laughs> to end it. i don't know but Helen, you've been with Phil for so many years, and I know you guys travel, like, all around the world, which is so amazing, and I'm sure you have both gone into, like, tips, Ooh. so I want to hear from you. Yes, oh, so many. Which one do I choose? <laughs> we are very lucky that we have been able to travel so much together, um, just, like, all across the country, all across the world. We went to Asia, Europe, but the one trip that I think was the hardest on us, I would say, is um, when he came to visit me in India for my last two days of work mm. there. Mm. So he was there for 48 hours. That's quick. Wow. It, very quick. Um, and then we had planned this whole like elaborate trip to Vietnam afterwards and, you know, just nice time together. He gets a parasite. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Day one? Day two or one. I yeah. don't know how long it takes mm. to actually attack a system but it was either a strain of e coli or a parasite in india okay first off let me rewind back a little bit so we after india we got to the airport and we were ready to go to japan i mean sorry not japan (laughs) vietnam apparently need a visa to get into vietnam did not Uh, know that oh okay okay. so that was already like uh uh-oh yeah (laughs) someone either none of us planned this well um we like went on facebook and we contacted someone and they gave us like a really sketchy e-visa and then we like venmoed them and we got in oh so it worked yeah (laughs) problem solving bad but so we got there and then on the plane philip was just like my stomach hurts (laughs) and i'm like oh (laughs) 
like okay yeah, yeah. yeah my stomach is relatively much stronger than his so mm. this is a very common occurrence i would say where oh. his stomach hurts and so i'm just like okay <laughs> did you think anything of it or were you just kind no of i was like, like go take a shit like yeah, you'll be yeah. good right <laughs> So we landed and I'm like, ooh, Vietnam, like, let's go eat. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, mm, okay, don't love your vibe right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to dinner, we eat. He's basically asleep. <laughs> Wait, what? He's like asleep during dinner. I have the photo. Hold on. I'm going to show you. So we're at dinner and. Oh my God, he's asleep. Oh no. He's asleep. <laughs> I'm the type of person that when I travel, I think I generally, even if I feel tired or emotionally you know going through things i will put on like a peppy smile because mm. i'm like i don't want to ruin someone else's time it's yeah, travel yeah. it's hard to do paying a lot of money for it he's sleeping <laughs> so i'm like hey babe can you like put in a little bit more effort yeah we're in vietnam mm. we're this is hard for us to get here you know like put in a little bit more effort he's like i can't i'm like i think you can and so we ended up going to the emergency room in vietnam and we're like we don't have Vietnamese insurance yeah like, oh we don't gosh. know how this works so we're calling like our our insurance and obviously it was closed it was like opposite time zones and uh, I don't even know like if we pay, like paid for it correctly I don't even know yeah, but we yeah. ended up going there and he like had to get an IV in him and like get medication and they said it was a strain of E. coli mm. um or some sort of a parasite or something and I have a photo of that too <laughs> <laughs> this is him in Vietnam <gasps> Oh, no. He looks like I'm over this. Basically, he's just like, I'm dying. He was afraid he was actually going to die. And that's when I got like really, really worried, too. So it was just it was a hard time. And I think something that I learned from that trip is that I'm always the type of person that's very much like, let's go. And maybe not very apparent or aware of other people's feelings and mm. how they're, you know, and, uh, like if someone's souring the mood, I'm like, why are you souring the mood instead mm. of like, are you OK? Mm. So that's something like we learned on this trip. And he actually had to get on a flight the next day with him himself like in that situation so it was just not it was not a good trip at all mm. but i think what we learned is just to to listen to each other when we're being kind of like down did he say like hey i'm like my stomach is like he did oh. but she said it's like him saying like what oh, time is it yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like take he, a shit that's it right? you're good yeah yeah. 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 yeah 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 so that was our hard that was probably the hardest trip that we we had taken oh together God. that is a scary thing i think anything like medical related in a mm. foreign country yeah. is scary oh poor phil yeah but he's okay he's great now i'm sure his immune system's a little bit better he's been saying less than his stomach hurts i'm like yay that yeah that built up your immunity <laughs> see that's me again going yay <laughs> damn yeah Hello everyone, Helen here, and this one is for all the parents out there who have babies that are still in their diapies. If you're a parent, I will be shocked if you haven't experienced a nasty, outrageously unnecessary blowout just yet. We used to experience them, and they were never a good time. But now, with the new and improved Pamper Swaddler's Diaper with Blowout Barrier Innovation, Swaddler's prevents up to 100% of leaks, even blowouts. This diaper has a blowout barrier at the back waist to prevent those messy leaks and blowouts, plus dual leak guard barriers at the legs to help protect leaks where they happen most often. Pamper Swaddler's are dermatologist approved by the Skin Health Alliance, hypoallergenic, and free of parabens and latex. Yes, we only want the best for our babies. They're available in sizes newborn to size 8 and now feature designs with new animal characters, Shiloh the Elephant and Freddy the Duck. How cute! For trusted protection, trust Pampers, the number one pediatrician recommended brand. So now that we've traveled with our significant others, what is a piece of advice you would give to someone out there who is just starting to travel with their SO? Planning their first trip together. Any advice? Yes. I would say, I mean, I think maybe I'm very biased, but it's like around like communicate on your planning styles, mm -hmm. but not just communicate because I feel like we did that. Mm -hmm. We're like, I tend to travel this way. I tend mm -hmm. to travel that way. But words and, and also your personal perception can be so different. Like set down time together. And when you're when you're together, like like actually or maybe just like plan together the first trip because you learn more mm -hmm. by doing things together versus mm -hmm. like there's a lot of possibility from miscommunication. Um, and then I think the second thing actually around your uh, idea, Helen, of like being being like positive through those mm. hard experiences because one thing I feel like Eugene and I were able to um, to do is even through like a really negative and like relationship shaking conversation like we had on the second day we were able to be like bring out the positive energy and be like we're here mm -hmm. we're only you know like mm -hmm. um, um, have patience for each other have patience for yourself and try to focus on the positive because 
when you're abroad, you know, it's like you're going to be there for a long time. You can't really like just like, oh, I, I need to go home and be in my space. So. Yeah. Yeah. I would say also definitely plan. Like there was one time I went on a trip with a friend, not a boyfriend, a friend. And we were like, oh, yeah, we're going to be doing the same things. We ended up doing half the things not with each other. Oh, so it's like you just actually never know. It's like you're compatible as friends, but it's like you have mm. different travel interests. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. Plan ahead of time so that there's no like tension of, oh, but beef skewer versus matcha you know like yeah, yeah, you know yeah. exactly where you're going um secondly i would say just be open-minded i think especially if you're traveling with a first time significant other you don't you might learn a lot of things that you're just not accustomed to or things that you wouldn't do normally like i think there was one time philip was like let's get mcdonald's for dinner and i was like what we're in this you know yeah. other country but he loves mcdonald's yeah and also something that i didn't know because i was still pretty i guess early on in my international traveling is that different mcdonald's in different countries have different types mm -hmm. of meals that are mm -hmm. so unique and good so by being sort of more open to that he showed me that world mm -hmm. and it allowed me to mm -hmm. you know be more cultured i guess yeah but yeah be just be a little bit more open-minded when you're traveling with someone new you. it's hard to because you're like you're gonna be my future husband it has to be perfect yeah, yeah. but it's it's just be just see them as like a friend yeah. you know mm -hmm. how would you just go with the flow have measured expectations i think yeah, yeah. That. i feel like i'm learning again <laughs> from this episode but I, I think a lot of my friends have been in relationships much longer than me so i've been taking notes along the way so now when ray and i are here my um, tip is kind of what Janet said. I'm a planner. And I think with Ray, I think one thing we noticed is that like, oh, we've been really busy. But we already said like, we're going to put on a calendar to sit down to plan. Because we don't, things have just been, we're just saying mm -hmm. things in passing. Mm -hmm. I DM this video about Tokyo. He's like, cool. I'm like, well, what about this? Let's take action. So mm -hmm. I think being proactive of planning a trip together, especially a big one. I think a second thing is always asking like, what is your, what kind of traveler are you? I always like to ask, ask everyone this on a first or second date because you kind of like vibe like oh you're very intense or you're more like laid back and what mm -hmm. is laid back look like to you mm -hmm. um so just have conversations about your past trips what your style like like what do you enjoy what do you not enjoy because then you kind of have like an idea going into a trip um, you're a planner but you're i don't think you're intense i'm a planner where, like janet where it's like hotel and accommodations Sorry, the same thing. Hotel and flights will be the first thing I book, but then I do like to have at least one to two, one to two things, big items mm. on the trip. But I also like a day where it's like free, free day. You do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. That way, it's more like you can explore. Another thing too that this is kind of like semi-related, but not. But one thing I learned about Ray is that when we go to places, we're not big on fine dining. We're like, oh, we go here, she go to a nice restaurant. We actually don't care. So even that lifestyle like preference is mm -hmm. something to note when you're traveling because I know you can make. Your, your travel, your trick could be really expensive or really not depending on what you guys like to do. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's something I, I, I learned. Yeah. Philip and I, we buy nips and we drink it in the parking lot so we save money on cocktails. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's true. I, I've done that with that you. That works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, I mean, the great thing about like Japan or Asia is that there's so many convenience stores. So excited. And we definitely did a good mix of like, like a nice, like nice fine dining for one meal and then like literally like egg sandwiches from 7-Eleven, you know, for another. Yes. So it is, but it's good to be on the same page mm -hmm. because if someone suggested McDonald's and I was expecting that we we're going to like go have fine like dining. Nice, yeah, yes. fine dining. Like, yeah, fine dressed up for the night. Yeah. Like, uh, no. <laughs> yes. um, oh, you know another thing I want to add? Another expectation thing? Expectations like your nightlife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, right, yeah. I think when I was younger, like, well, Helen and I went to Japan together. We like partied every was night. Octagon or octopus or <laughs> That was uh, Korea, but we went to oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> We went to some four four layered tier room in Tokyo, and everyone was like, "Oh, oh my god, I got his number! I was so excited." <laughs> Never texted Gosh. him, but I think it's like when you're younger, like you're definitely more down to like party and drink. But when you're yeah, older, I was yeah. like, I don't drink anymore on trips because I don't want to. But just like being online on that because it's another expectation thing. That's yeah, true. yeah, that's true. Actually, that was that was something that like Eugene and I said we both enjoyed the days where or the nights where we were able to just like wander around mm. and we meeting like other locals. So you're you're there with your partner and it's like you're not there to like meet other guys or whatever. But like to get like um, to get still like a different dynamic between just the two of you mm. for like all ten nights, like having like going to the bar and then like meeting a local and having them share their experiences mm -hmm. right uh, yeah just like being on the same page in social interactions yeah okay so what are top three destinations that you want to go to with your partner mm. okay so I'll go first Hawaii I want somewhere tropical and we uh, like look at him <laughs> shirtless uh two he works out a lot yeah mm. or go to onsen or you got hey. no, whatever I'll go to my I don't go to my what to my room oh okay <laughs> sorry two um 
Taiwan. Mm. Um, which you're going which to. You're going. I think you just want to go to our motherlands, and Vietnam's also on our list. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, motherland. it's a better experience than what we had. The bug? Yeah. I'll note. The bug. How about you two? I want to go to, and I'm thinking like in the context of like a honeymoon, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. European destination. I do want to go to either Santorini, Tuscany, or um, Lake Como. Oh. oh That's yeah. one. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> <laughs> Two, Alaska or somewhere to see oh. the Northern Lights. <gasps> Oh, yeah, that'd be really nice. And then three, Japan, I actually have not been to with Philip yet. So that's one place that I would want to go with him. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about for you? So we actually talked about going to um, Nepal and Bhutan, like the beautiful like mountain ranges. And I think for me personally, like an interest in uh, seeing a country and culture that's like influenced by like Buddhism. Mm. Uh, And then aside from that, we're kind of in the same like region of Asia, Indonesia. Um, He spent a lot of time in Thailand and um, it's kind of like down you know more south in that mm-hmm. area and i would love to see in if it were feeling kind of more like a i guess like i think it is tropical beachy yeah place but mm. um yeah those are some of the the places okay how about three that you would not want to go or one that you would not want to mm. go with them mountaineering wherever oh. <laughs> like ray's really into like rocks rock climbing <laughs> sorry <laughs> i don't mind if I'm in a gym, but like being in the mountains and like being dirty and like mm. camping is just not my vibe. So we already said, you go, I'll make sure there's a nice hot pot of soup ready for you in your Aww. house. That's so, good balance. That's good balance. Yeah. yeah, yeah so good I was balance. like, because you like to lounge too. So it's like you lounge while he does that and you meet together yeah. afterwards. Because mm. I can't lounge on a rock. <laughs> You could just very uncomfortably. <laughs> yeah, just the, the, I I admire that he loves that. It's just not for me. Yeah. Mm, okay. It's good good self awareness. Um, I, w- I actually when you said that, that reminded me. There's a specific hike in I think in Italy Italy that he wants to do, and it's on the side of a mountain. Or you're on like the path is like uh, metal rods, and mm. you're like on like walking on the uh. side of the mountain. So that I was like, mm, I'm okay. But uh, he, I would love to. I'm open to like going camping with him and stuff. So we've kind of talked about that. Like, uh, what do you but not, not want to do? But, but yeah, I would not want to do the mountainside <laughs> thingy. Um, also, I think like for me, I like if I were to go do like a yoga retreat or something like that, I could see him not really loving that. So. Ooh, yoga retreat in Nepal. You should do that. Oh, yeah, Bali. maybe that would be like I would do that, and then he go do yeah. something else. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was very close to doing that when I was in India because it was like oh, right there, yeah, like up yeah. north, mm-hmm. and it was going to be like an eight day trip where it's just like yoga i, I would have oh, been wow. a different person for sure i was, I was like you i know i could see, I could see you can you imagine that. me doing yeah. that <laughs> okay what what i'm curious about yours because you like going everywhere we actually really do enjoy traveling together like i, I was trying to think about like what is a place that we wouldn't want to go together I, don't, I the only thing i could think of is maybe like if we were in japan and i wanted my sushi oh mm. philip doesn't like sushi i don't know how we got married but he doesn't like sushi so i would be going with friends instead yeah. or by mm. myself because yeah, yeah. i'd just be like are you enjoying yourself and be like oh, it's fine be like it's fine <laughs> i'd be so upset mm. but then he would also give me his pieces so maybe it's okay ah uh, but true. yeah that's that's the only thing i can think of japan specifically sushi mm. thank you so much for joining us today in this conversation thank you ladies for supporting me and listening to me kind of recount my first international trip with a significant other um you know as you can see if you followed me on instagram there are beautiful photos it's great experiences but traveling is also a really good time to test things mm. and to learn about each other um, and hopefully grow from that mm-hmm. so Thank you for sharing your particular trips as well and the things that you've learned. If you are thinking about going on a trip with a significant other, drop in the comments where you would like to travel to. Mm. We'd love to hear some places. And with that, we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye. Bye.